All right, peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, welcome everybody, and please invite your friends. And uh, this is the second broadcast we do for today. Actually, the third. Uh, before you call me a uh, Sani, uh, take a break. Don't be a kid. You will call me when I say call me. Before we start, guys, I have a link in the info. I would like to receive your support. This is a petition to the White House, to Trump, to stop the support of the terrorists in Kosovo. Maybe many do not know that America is the biggest supporters of the terrorists in Kosovo. Actually, they are the one who made the terrorists in Kosovo take over Kosovo. Kosovo is the heart of Serbia, is not the land of any Muslim. The first king of Serbia was born in Kosovo. But as usual, the nest of the devil, the CIA, always support terrorists. Same as they supported Osama bin Laden, same as they supported in Kosovo, and same they supported ISIS in Syria and Al Qaeda. Nothing new, history repeats itself. For CIA, Islamic terrorism is a gift. Don't call me, Abdul. Don't call me. Hold your horses. You can call me only when I say call. Don't be rude. I know you are a Muslim. I know nobody taught you how to be, but I will teach you. Call me when I say, feel free to call me. What a weird people. So if you don't mind, there is a link down in the info. Click on it and sign a petition. It costs you no money. This is not a donation. Nobody asking you for money. Just go there, put a name, last name, email, and send it to your friends. As simple as that. Now, uh, <clears throat> Many uh, churches were destroyed, and the land is taken off from the Christians. And this is not new. Let's see here. Let me show you in the screen. This is the petition. Will cost you no money, no donation. Just fill up a name, first name, last name, email, and send. And for sure, you can read the petition before you sign it. Uh, but I believe that Trump really he don't care. Uh, Trump is just another American president who don't give any, I don't want to use the word damn, about the Christians around the world. The only thing they care for in America is Israel. And we know that. So if the building in front of us destroyed was a synagogue, you will see all of America is concerned. You will see the Christian churches around America is concerned. But as long as it is not a synagogue, I mean, who care? Hmm. Those are Serbian. And let their churches get burned. And let the Muslim take their land. Hmm. That is the truth. However, we as a Christians, we support the truth always. And me, myself, I always support Israel. So when I say that they support Israel always, doesn't mean that Israel should not be supported but I mean why we don't support the Christians if you are a Christian and why in the world Trump who he claimed to be Christian he don't care for the Christians 
Clinton obviously he is no Christian he is a whore same as his wife he was sleeping around in the White House in the office and his wife she is no better she is corrupt and they are the one who sponsored the terrorists in Bosnia and destroyed Serbia and killed tens of thousands of Christians in that war yet the Muslims they pay respect to America after they support them in El Bosnia and they did 9-11 this is what happened when you support the devil now we go back to our topic <clears throat> we are against war but if war happened what about those who support support no one except justice don't support the Christians if you don't want to support them but don't make terrorists victorious everybody knows that during the war in Kosovo Arab was fighting there Afghan was there Turkish was there Albanian was there I mean they are having terrorists from around the earth to fight in El Bosnia and the Serbian they were fighting alone if there is a criminal a war criminal bring him to justice it doesn't matter who is he he is a Serbian he is from Kosovo but obviously what happened in this war is absolute and just and now the Christians and Serbia and I'm talking now about civilian women and children's people leaving their houses churches are being destroyed just because the American they cannot stop supporting terrorism in Serbia as you see the title we have today it's about a lady her name Samantha G Boyle or Boyle I think I'm saying the name correctly this woman supposedly she converted to Islam because her elder sister she married a Muslim long time ago and she converted to Islam as I understood and now she is thinking about leaving Islam and she's afraid that she might leave Islam soon and I watched the video and I found it very funny by the way I'm not being uh, I'm not making fun of you uh, Samantha but your video is truly truly funny it's not mature now you leave Islam you don't leave Islam this is the last of my worry this is your decision and if I am you why I want to leave Islam I mean you go to heaven your husband he will have hundreds of versions to sleep with which mean you will be so comfortable by the time your turn come you will be sleeping for 10 years according to Muhammad a Muslim man he will have a 70 years orgasm so at least he have 72 wives if you have sex with each one of them and each one of them will take him 70 years orgasm let me get the calculator please let us see <clears throat> if we go in the calculator if we see at least the lowest reward of a Muslim man is 72 then if everyone just the orgasm alone not the sex because orgasm should be less than the long the the the, the, the time it's going to take for sex 72 x 70 that's mean 5040 years before you sleep with your husband next time if we calculated only the time for orgasm so why you want to leave Islam I mean it's a long vacation <laughs> now look what she put in the in the beginning of uh, of the Quran of of, uh, of her video she is afraid that if she leave Islam many will leave Islam too because she was able or she she was a reason for many people to convert to Islam and she quote for us this verse and if one any of anyone earns sin he earn it or he earnest against his own soul I mean this is very silly of you to say by the way because if this is true then Adam commits sin why we are his children out of heaven if this is really what Quran is teaching Adam is the one who commits sin so why I am not in heaven 
you are born as a child with no sin so we should be born in heaven if this is really the case obviously it is not Quran is a very silly stupid book same time when you say the Quran says that anyone he earned sin he earned it against his soul that's mean he will be judged for your sin not for the sin of others but the Quran and the hadith teach always something different as an example if we go in the in the Quran the hadith as an example Muhammad he said the Prophet said and this is Sahih hadith so the Muslim they might say to you it's weak daif you know they play the game of vitamin A and B and D and missing the Prophet said where is it not for Bani Israel meat would not decay and where it not for Eve no woman will betray her husband what does that mean exactly that's mean Muhammad he believed that the sin of you as a woman is something inherited from Eve so how you quote for me that verse where it says everyone earned his own sin when Muhammad he blamed your sin for Eve and the funny the Muslim they say <laughs> Christians they believe in the original sin and they are silly it's a stupid is not logical if this is not the original sin so what original sin then and why he's blaming Eve alone the one who commits sin it was not Eve alone it was Adam and Eve but because Muhammad always he have a very filthy image about women to the point he believed that women are the devil that's why I say to you my friend stay as a Muslim don't leave Islam you will not find a better religion than this describing you as the devil why because Muhammad he got horny Muhammad he was sitting with his friends the companion were around and he saw a woman Muhammad is staring heavily at the bum of the women at the legs of the women at the breast of the women and he got extremely horny Jabir reported that Allah messenger Allah pray on him and salute him not peace upon him so a woman so he came to his wife Zainab as she was standing leather and had sexual intercourse with her he then went to his companions and told them his companion they were waiting outside because this is how what happened the women he said the women advance and retires in the shape of the devil so when of you see a woman he should come to his wife for that will reveal what is feel his in his heart so look what jesus said if you see a woman she is not yours you don't look you don't wish you don't desire it's better for you to block your eye out from losing all losing the eye better than losing all your body and go to hellfire muhammad he have no problem to the point he was looking at the women to the point he gets so horny because you see if you look at the women just a look there's no way you will get horny for a second unless you are thinking and staring looking at her physical body desiring something you see in front of you there's no way a man a woman she walked by he just got horny unless he is a donkey and actually even a donkey if we do that because he see a female and he see her uh, simply naked <laughs> as I know as I remember uh, donkeys uh, females don't wear panties so I understand if a donkey he gets so excited that he cannot control himself and though he could go crazy but this is a prophet of God and look how bad he is he go to his wife where she is busy doing leather tanning if you do not know what leather tanning mean it means she is boiling water she is boiling colors she is boiling leather she look horrible yet Muhammad he go to her and say now why because I saw a woman outside of my house and she was wearing burqa by the way but she made me horny because I was staring at her bum that is the quality of the prophet you are following so why you want to leave Islam you cannot find something like this anywhere in the world we continue Muhammad not only say such a thing against what you say in the video 
that women are the reason of sin and if there's no Eve and as you see he even blamed the Jews as usual the Jews are re the reasons uh, to be blamed by the way I uh, you know I told you I have water on my ears and uh, I, I don't really hear good in my right left eye it's going to take maybe a few days before for it's dry but I was thinking do you think this is what happened because the prophet of the smart intelligent God Allah who Allah told him he said that shaitan he urinate in the ears so I was saying uh-huh shaitan urinate in my ears and the prophet never tell a lie and you know the prophet he knew the best actually he know better than Allah just take a note about that When you say in the beginning of your video that both Islam and Christianity teach tolerance, I was dying from laughing. Islam and Christianity teach tolerance? Are you sure? I mean, which galaxy you live in? Oh, oh they told you ISIS is not Islam. Oh, oh, oh they told you that Al-Qaeda is not Islam. Oh, oh, they told you the one who drive the trucks in the Christmas market are not Islam, right? But Muhammad is not Islam too? Where is the tolerance of Muhammad? Don't call me, guys, unless I say it is time to call. Otherwise, I will block you. The problem is some people are not even listening. The second they see my Skype is there, right away they start texting me. And then they wonder why I did block them. Let us read together. When you say in your video, in this article, if anyone earns sin, he earns earn it against his own soul. Chapter 4, verse 111. And then we see that your self-acclaimed prophet saying the following and by the way before we talk about it this is sahih because you muslim you play the game always oh this is weak uh brother this is weak this is not true this is sahih sahih mean correct in case you are not a person who knows what we are talking about and we can read the arabic or the translation it doesn't matter the prophet he said لا تبدأ اليهود والنصارى بالسلام إذا لقيتم أحدهم في الطريق فاضطروه اضطروهم إلى أضيقه. What does that mean? Translation. Look at the tolerance of your prophet. He took our land. He forced us to pay jizya. Pay or die. He raped our women. He kidnapped our children. He killed the men. And now whatever left. Muhammad is teaching the, the Muslims the good ethic. The message of Allah said, don't proceed the Jews and the Christians with salam. And if any one of you meet them in the road, force them to the most narrow partition. The narrow partition, in case you do not know, is the sewage. In the old days, the sewage was open. There is a side of the, wall, the, of the road where the dirty water run. So look at the terms of Muhammad, your best prophet, the one amazing prophet of God, the beloved prophet, the one who taught you the amazing ethic. If you see a person in the street right now, and he is a Christian, I will force him to jump in the sewage. Why? Because he's a Christian. And yet you say in your video that both religion teach Tolerance. Why did Muhammad says uh, pray for those who curse you? Love your enemy. What are you talking about? Muhammad, the Quran is full of killing those who don't. Who, the Quran in chapter 9, verse 29 says, Fight those who don't believe in Allah in the last days from the Jews and the Christians until either they convert to Islam or they pay the jizya, which means you kill them, you pay, or you die. And you are saying to me, Terence, and the Christian they never fought Muhammad.
And if we go down here to show you the tolerance of Islam, you will see it says the meaning of this hadith according to the scholars. Regarding the meaning of this hadith, do not precede the Jews and the Christians. Some of the people of knowledge said, which means the scholars, that it's only mean that it is dislike because it would be honoring them. If you say assalamu alaikum to a Christian, you are honoring the Christian. You cannot do that. Islam forbid the Muslim from honoring a Christian. You see how much tolerance that Islam is? And not only that. And and the Muslims were ordered to humiliate them for this reason. When one of them meet on the path, then the path is not yield for him. Which means if a Muslim he meet a Christian, he will not let him go through in the road. He have to force him to go in the sewage. Because if you do that, you will be honoring them. And you say in the beginning of your video. Both Christianity and Islam teaching terms. I mean, who is the naive here, my friend? Who is the one who taught you the cult you believe in? And now you are thinking to leave Islam? You know, too late. I, I advise you to stay. You belong there. I believe strongly there's no way any human being will convert to Islam unless he have a mental issue. It doesn't matter who is he. It doesn't matter who is he. Because after all the technology and the internet and you can find tons of reference and etc And you can read Islamic books which is saying that to you. It's in the front of you. This is an Islamic book. This is not a Christian book So if you are telling me that after three or four years being a Muslim and now you decide to leave Islam, but you don't say why. Still, you say in the video, she says, still, I believe Allah is the only true God. Still, I believe that Islam is the true religion, but I'm afraid I might leave Islam. What does that mean? This is a true religion? This is a true God? Teach people to hate each other? Not to forget to mention, as long as we are talking about hate, the Quran says that Allah he love to spread hate between the Christians. He love it. I mean, everybody have a hobby. Allah, he have his own hobby to spread hate and enmity between the Christians. You see the nobility of Allah? This God is very noble. He is very high. He is not a savage. He is not satanic. He is God. He is a holy God. And the proof is in the front of our, our eyes. And with those who say, Lu, we are Christians, we made a covenant, but they forgot the part of what wherefore they were admonished. Therefore, we stirred up enmity and hatred among them till the day of resurrection. Aha! Uh -huh. You know what? Let us say the Christians they are lost. The Christians are not good, not 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 trustworthy, not 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 not. By the way, Christians are the the, the most people who give to charities and help people around the earth. And nobody can beat them in that. But let us say, Christians are the same as Boko Haram, and Taliban, and ISIS, and every criminal in this world. Is that a reason to spread hate between them? I mean, don't they need your help? When the Jews, they said to Jesus, why you are speaking to those sinners? He said, I came to the sick, not to the healthy. Your God, he will make the sick more sick don't call me don't call me my friend why you are calling me what's wrong with people don't call me sometimes I feel like I'm talking to a bunch of kids don't call me when I have a topic don't call me if i have a person speaking to me live on air too don't call me because you are wasting your time how i can talk to you if he's talking to me when i say please feel free now to call me you can call me so as you see this is the god of islam the one you are saying that he teach 
Terence. And not only that, the God of Islam, and the funny you said you became a Muslim, but do you know, according to Islam, you cannot be friends to your family? In chapter 9, verse number 23, it says, Take not your own family members as a friends. Just because they are disbelievers. Where is the tolerance of Islam? And not to forget to mention Muhammad in chapter 9, verse number 29, says it clearly, kill the Christians if they refuse to accept Islam. قاتلوا قاتلوا الذين لا يؤمنون بالله ولا باليوم الآخر ولا يحرمون ما حرم الله وحرم الله ورسوله ولا يدينون دين الحق من الذين أوتوا الكتاب حتى يعطوا الجزية عن يد وهم صاغرون fight them kill them those who don't believe in Allah and the last days from the Christians and the Jews until and they forbid what Allah forbid until they convert to Islam or they pay the jizya What kind of a prophet this prophet is? And you know what? If you want to kill us because we don't believe in Islam, how he can accept to stay without believing in Islam if we pay him money? That's mean we can bribe him. Muhammad, all what he care for is money. You are a kafir, you are a najis, you are a Christian, you are an infidel, you will go to hell, we should be killing you. And if you but if you pay us, it's okay. Stay as a Christian. But if you don't pay us, we will kill you. How in the world this man is a prophet of God? So I find it very funny when you speak about such a thing. However, still I advise you to stay as a Muslim. I think you fit there. You're a prophet actually. Describe Muslim women as they are stupid. If we go in the hadith, we will find the following. And by the way, all the hadith we are mentioning is sahih. They are not fake. So a Muslim cannot say to you, it's not true. Muhammad, he told the people, he told the women, that the majority of you women are going to go to hell. Why? Actually, in different hadith, Muhammad, he said that the women are going to be the fuel of hellfire. The fuel? Yes, the fuel of the hellfire. By the way, I noticed in your video, you keep saying, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, because Muhammad, he scared the hell of you. He terrified you, and you became captured by slavery of terrorism. So Muhammad, he came to the women, and he said to them, Women, give arms, give me your money. Give me your money if you want not to go to hell. Read carefully with me. The Prophet said, He asked them to give alms, for most of them are the fuel of hell. The fuel of hell? They are not going to be in hell. They are the fuel of hell. <laughs> Allah, He cannot light His fire by gas he will light his fire by women. You are the circle of fire. A woman having dark spot on the chick stood up and said, Why? Why is it so, messenger of Allah? Muhammad, he said, For you grumble often and show any gratitude to your spouse. And then they began to give alms out of their jewelries and their earring 
and put it in the clothes of Bilal, the slave, the poor black slave Bilal, the money bag, the servant, the cook, the one who cleaned the diaper of Muhammad, the one who collect the scam. So Muhammad here, he scared the hell of those women and he convinced them that if you give me your earring, you will not go to hell. Otherwise, you are going to go to hell, I'm telling you. And you will notice here, Muhammad, he focused on the women, they are the devil, as we showed you. Eve, if no Eve, there's no woman, betray her husband. So you inherit your sin and your evil from Eve. All of you are evil according to Islam. Muhammad, he insists that every woman is Satan. When Muhammad, he saw a woman walking in the street, he got horny. And then he said, the woman, she come in the image of a devil and she retry, retire in the image of the devil. But yet Muhammad, he have 13 of them. But Muhammad is more than just an idiot. Muhammad, he give reasoning. Muhammad, he claim that women, they have deficiency in their intelligence and that why they will go to hell and here we find that muhammad is being really stupid because if women she have intelligence deficiency as he claimed which is not a true yes some women they might be stupid but there's many men they are stupid too what does this have to do with the gender but according to muhammad every woman she is a fool and this is why we see here Muhammad, he is debating with the Muslim women, scaring the hell of them to take their earring, and look what happened. Muhammad, he said, O women folk, you should give a charity and be diligent in seeking Allah forgiveness, because I have seen, i.e., the night when he went to the heaven which nobody witnessed as usual that the majority of you are the deliverers of hellfire a woman among them she said why is that majority of the world of hellfire is women he said you curse frequently and you are ungrateful to your husband but muhammad he cursed frequently too even muhammad in the hadith he says anyone i curse I curse him or even I slander him without just without just which means he's abusing I made an agreement between me and Allah that will make that a blessing for you so how come Allah will take them to hell for cursing but he will take you to heaven and will make your cursing a blessing for the Muslim what a scam They curse, they go to hell. You curse, you go to heaven, and the one you curse him, Allah give him blessing. Oh Allah, I am being, and if any person among the Muslims who I did abuse or invoke curse upon him, make it source of mercy and purity if, if, if. so the women they curse they go to hell you curse you and the one he cursed they go to to heaven together aisha she noticed muhammad is cursing people is even his 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 harming them so muhammad she said to him what's up with this he said, Allah Messenger, good would reach everyone, but would not reach these two. He said, Why so? I said, You have invoked curse and heard meditation upon both of them. He said, Don't you know that I have made condition with my Lord? Condition, a man he made condition on in his God. Hey Allah, I will have a condition with you. If I curse somebody, you make it a blessing for me and him, okay? <laughs> Since when a man, he can do that to his God? Since when we can make God 
come to our terms and conditions since when if I curse I, I, I will make you go to heaven I go to heaven too but if you curse you go to hell this is a prophet of God he Allah sent me as mercy for all the world yeah this is why you slaughter you kill your rape because you are a merciful person your mercy allow you to have sex with a child a man who have mercy he will not even think to have a child in his bed so I am one of the children of Adam I became angry so why if you became angry you will not go to hell but if the women curse because they are angry they will go to hell ah because they are women and I am the prophet and you will see here he says if anyone I abuse or curse how that can be a prophet of God then she said something very important she said she is afraid that Allah will make her lose her belief and this is true the God of Islam is the devil when you say you are afraid that Allah will make you lose your belief you just said that the one who make you leave Islam is Allah not the shaitan If we go in the Quran, we will find the following. Which verse we will show you? I mean, there is endless. This is a book of the devil. We read in the Quran and we find, you see, this is why I have one of my books is called The Deception, Deception of Allah. As an example, chapter 4, verse number 143, it says that the one who Allah deceive, nobody can guide. The Muslim, they translate, make it trying to make it look nicer. They say that the one who causes him to go astray why Allah want to cause someone to go astray you know if we take the the translation to be accurate which is not because here in Arabic it says yudlil and yudlil in Arabic mean to deceive I can right now I can open the dictionary in front of your eyes and show you what the word yudlil mean I can copy the word as in, as it is in the front of us and go to the dictionary copy and then we go to the dictionary and check it out and you will see what the dictionary says about this word let me post it here in front of you as we copy it from the Quran Do you see it deceive lead astray misdirect misguided mislead pervert cheat deceive why Allah would deceive people if this is what Allah do what shaitan does for a living then so you said something very truthful that you're afraid that Allah might deceive you and make you leave Islam <laughs> you know your God he see you as a stupid foolish creature I don't know what do you see about yourself I'm not insulting you this is what your God he says about you let me show you something if you remember when we saw the hadith where Muhammad he said that most of the women they are going to go to hellfire 
why women they will go to hellfire Muhammad he gave a very clear reasoning they are suffering from lack of intellect and they are which means they are stupid and they are suffering from other problem they have menstruation have you ever heard of a stupid teaching like this I will explain to you in case you are slow when a woman she asked Muhammad what is the lack and what is the lack of our intelligence as you see in the screen why well, you are accusing us that we have a lack of wisdom and we have deficiency in our intelligence he said Muhammad giving now the answer why why we do why we have why we are going to go to hell because simply you have a lack of wisdom and fear in religion so they have two things how we can prove that women they have a lack of intellect and intelligence in Islam Muhammad he said what is the, the one a woman she said what is our deficiency in our wisdom and in our religion he said your lack of wisdom can be well judged actually in Arabic it says proved from the fact that the evidence of two women is equal to one man which means according to Islamic teaching according to the Quran actually this is a verse in the Quran women are not allowed to be witnesses and at all actually unless it is about borrowing money and very few cases as an example if a baby if a woman she gave birth to a baby because only women she can get inside the room in this case a women women they can be witnesses otherwise no women are allowed to witness in a capital punishment which means anything have to do with theft crimes kidding uh, uh, any anything women are not allowed to be witnesses only in the case of borrowing money so Muhammad here is saying to the women the proof that you are half a brain and you are stupid even the Quran and Allah he says that you are not allowed to be equal to a man two women equal to one man in the case of witnessing in the case of money and then he says well and the other deficiency you have you don't pray the same as the, the as the men why why we don't pray the same as the men Muhammad he explained he said because you have menses because you have ministration so you don't pray like men but you are the one who forbid them from praying and fasting when they have their ministration so look how stupid this argument if the women they have a defect in their intellect and they have ministration and this is the reason to go to hell that's mean Allah is a stupid God because who is the one who made the women with the defect of intellect isn't it Allah the maker if he is the maker so now you want to punish her for you made her a foolish who is the one who made women have ministration isn't it Allah so you are saying the women they will go to hell because they have a lack of intellect which Allah he is the one who created in this way if it is true and he will send them to hell because they have a lack of a deficiency of religion because they have menses I mean who is the stupid here do you see how stupid this cult is now the the guy from uh, from uh, Nigeria feel free to call me please the guy what his name Abdul Anis 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 what his name Asani, Asani. Call me Asani. And promise me you will not make me shout. I'm speaking all day. I don't even feel good. All right? Don't make me shout. Speak with respect. Give me time to talk. I will give you time to talk. Call me. I will call you.
talep ediyoruz yani. Alright. I'm not going to call you until tomorrow. Call me when you get back. And don't forget to ask for permission from your mom before you call me. We have another Muslim. He said he want to challenge me. Let me find him. Here we go. This guy is gone. This guy, he sent me texts in the text. He's saying, uh, I challenge you, etc. Blah, blah, blah. I will prove to you, you know, nothing. And then he sent me, it sound like you know a lot about the hadith. <laughs> answer, Abdul, answer. What is that? Why why those Muslims they say they want to challenge me and they want to debate me, but when we call them, they are not here. I am a big fan of yours, CP. God bless you. I just order your, your your books. Well, I hope you enjoy it, and don't forget to make a review after you read my books, my friend. Who is a Muslim? Wanna tell us how Muhammad? How Muhammad? He is a prophet of God. How is God? He says such a foolish thing. And by the way, this is Quran. This is not only Hadith. This is not only Hadith. If we go in the Quran chapter 2 verse number a to 80 uh, you know what hold on to 82 I'm getting old the Quran says if you want to borrow money you have to have witnesses that's good However, two men of your men, two men, and get two witnesses out of your men. This is what the Quran says. The Quran did not mention the women. Women is the last chance, last choice, because women are stupid, as I said, according to Islam. Requiring witnesses to attend the dictation of the contract. And if there is, are not two men available, then a man, at least, and two women this is a requirement only for contract that directly or indirectly involve money this is only in the case of money and then it says require that two women take a place of one man as witnesses because women's shortcomings as a prophet described, Muslim recorded the hadith, which it says, O oh, women, give away charity and ask for forgiveness. For I saw that you com 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 comprise the majority of the hellfire. And why? Because you curse a lot, and you don't appreciate your spouse, and you have your menses, as we explained to you. And then here it says in Arabic, Naqisat wa aqlin wa deen. And this is what the Muslim don't translate to you correctly in English. Naqisat, aql, aql means a brain. Naqisat, they don't have a complete brain. They have half a brain. This is why two women equal to one man. They are they are half a brain and they are half in the religion. Oh Allah Messenger, what is the shortcoming in our mind? He said. As for the shortcoming of your mind, and this is uh, the testimony of two women equal to testimony of one man. And this is for the shortcoming in the mind, as for the shortcoming in the religion. And by the way, this is a translation, not accurate. It says the deficiency, uh, or let us say stupidity. Women remains for night at the time she does not pray 
breaks the fast of Ramadan. What does that mean? Because they have their menses. And the Quran claim that two women is a, is a necessity only if they are approved, which means not only two women, they have to be approved. There's other conditions. And the Quran explain why two women are equal to one man. So if one of them errs, the other one will remind her. <laughs> and here we find uh, we find that this wisdom is full of stupidity, because if women is half a brain anyway, what is my guarantee that the second woman she will not be half a brain too? How a half a brain can correct a half a brain? Are we following, guys? People, do you understand what I'm saying? If you just said to us that women are stupid, so what the point of saying to me, two stupid is allowed only, not one stupid. Do you understand, Muslims? He's a liar. He is in my list. I just called him. What blocked him? What blocked him? How he is in this conversation if he's blocked? Asani Shola and he have his friend with him. Adagwana and Jamalu Alaba. I mean, look like we have a company here. What about to bring the family? I will call him again. <laughs> Answer. Yes, I said. Hello. Okay, before we start, promise me Hello? you will not make me shout. Do you hear me? Hello? Hold on. Is it close? Do you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, me. promise me, please, before Hello? we start, yes. that we will not shout over each other. Can we do that? Hello, yeah, we can do that. Okay. Now, I, want, I want you to give me something like give me time to talk, and you have no time problem. To what do you say? Also. What do you say about the topic we are saying that women they are half a brain? Yeah, yeah, you talked about women that they are half a brain. I have a particular question for you, too. Before, I'll answer you. Be, before you, you, you talk promise about, that you answer. You see, if you want to talk to me, you don't say I have a question for you, too. Just tell me about first what we are talking about. I'm talking about this topic for the last 30 minutes, and we cannot jump over it. So, what do you say? Yeah, like. Like, I, as, I, as a researcher, I have a question I want to ask you. One, right. I will answer your question. I promise to answer your question. Okay. I want you to promise you are going to answer my question. Just promise. Let everybody know. I will, you, I will, you I will answer your question. No problem. Go ahead. That's the promise. I don't trust a Christian, but I will, I will trust you. I don't you trust Muslims. Muslim. But now let's go. My friend, don't, yeah, don't insult. Oh, sorry. It, it, your Quran trusts the Christians, so how you cannot trust the Christians? Yeah, don't, don't, don't insult. Don't insult me. Don't okay. Insult. Do, you yeah, to, do you want to get no, your busted? Your do you want to get your busted? You want me to get you busted right now? Don't the Quran trust the Christians, don't trust Muslims. Hello? Do you want me to get you busted right now? The Quran saying you can trust the Christian, you cannot trust the Muslims. Oh, yeah, let me see. Let me see what the Quran says. Quran never mentioned Christian, please. The Quran, Quran never, never mentioned, mentioned Christian. Christian. Yeah, Quran never mentioned Christian. Show I just finished my research. Okay, this okay, again. okay, okay, hold I on. I left. Hold. I did research more. Me, I'm a researcher. I did research more and I discovered that Quran has never mentioned Christian. What do you mean by the, when you say Christians? Who is a Christians for you? 
Thank you very much. Now, there is even between Christian and Nosoro and Jew. There are distinct differences. In religion, there is something we call history. Historically is part of life. So now, when we talk about historically, the genesis of a Christian is from the Rome. Why the genesis of a Nosoro is from the Jerusalem? It's I think from you what? From what? Now, from, from Jerusalem, historically. The Nosoro is from Jerusalem. Yeah. Nosoro mm. are the true follower of Jesus then when he was alive. Mm. Christian never have any contact with Jesus when he was alive. The mm. person that created Christian is Paul. According to Acts chapter 11, verse 25 and 26, that is the first. You went and hold, my friend. So, I, lo I lost you. You, I, you went and hold. What you said, go ahead, say again. Okay, yeah. I said, there is one between Nosoro and Christian. Hmm. Quran has never mentioned Christian. Hmm. If you check the Arabic text very so, well, there's so, nothing okay, like Let us make it clear. Who is Nasara? Let us make it simple. Who is the Nasara? Thank you. Thank you. The Nasara are the follower of Jesus when he was alive. Mm -hmm. Those who listen to Jesus' words, okay. just that follows the full step. And okay. according to them, they are Nasara because they are from a religion, from a particular, from a particular region called Nazareth on the Galilee. In mm. Israel, Israel is the state. Okay. Galilee is like a is like a city. Why Nosoro is like a community name. If you can you can check that. Okay. In Matthew so chapter now Nasara. So according to your Quran, you are saying Nasara is coming from the Nazareth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where we can find to... that in the Quran? I didn't say Quran says. Please, I didn't say. So Quran where says you got this from? from? Where you got this from? Nazareth. Where you get this Historically, from? I said history, history. Okay. I'm a student of history. So, I'm talking so, about okay. History. Is that the correct no, history? No, Hello? Do you agree that this is the correct history? Yeah, it is the correct history. Yeah. yeah. Do you promise me that you will not change your mind if I show you a verse from the Quran saying the opposite? That's what? <laughs> it doesn't matter what that's what. You just say the history, and you said the history is the correct one, that the Nasara is coming from the word Nazareth. Correct. Everybody heard you. Now, hello, hello, hello. Let me, let me, let me finish this. Sorry no, no, no. Don't finish here. because we don't want to jump, my friend. Hold on, one by one. Okay. You, everybody heard oh, you. Yeah, it's yeah. recorded. You said that the word Nasara is coming from the word Nazareth. I said to you, from where? You said it from history. I said, are you sure? You said yes. I said to you, is is that the correct meaning for sure? You said yes. I said, now what if I show you the Quran saying the opposite, something different? What you will do? That's what I. Now, why I'm saying this is that. What you will do if I show you that the Quran says something different? Okay, I want to tell you that I want to tell you that Quran did not say anything different. My friend, this I'm is saying. not the question now. What Why Quran you don't tell say? me? Why you don't tell me what you will do if I show you the Quran says something different? Because you are saying you are sure that the word Nasara is coming from the word Nazareth. Everybody heard you, and this is the truth according to you. So if the Quran is saying something different, that means the Quran is saying a lie. Correct. Hello, hello, hello. Do you want to get me clear? I have not landed. Let me land. You you hang me in it, please. Let me just land. We are no, no, to we want to make, make sure you just say it's something very important. Uh, you, it, the word you Nasara, the word Nasara. Hold time. on, we promise our other we will not fight, we will not shout. Hold on, yes, the, yes you yes, said yes. you said the word Nasara is confirmed by history, and this is what you believe that it's coming from the word Nazareth, correct? Okay, 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 and this is the truth. Anything else is a lie. So I want you no, now. No, that is not what I'm saying. Now. No, this is what you said. You are the one who said to me from the beginning, Nasara are not the Christians, have... and Nasara is coming from the word Nazareth, and Nasara is coming from this. I ask you from where you said from history. So now, if I show you from the Quran something else, which one is the truth? I want to know. I want you to know that Quran is also a reference to my to my to my history. I want to put Quran as a reference. My friend, Let don't change the topic. It. Don't change the topic. You are the one who confirmed to us. It's recorded. That the word Nasara yes. is coming from Nazareth, yes. and I asked you many times, and you said ah. yes. Oh my God! So what will you, you do don't now? Don't get me. What we will do now? now we have, you see, in I, history. Don't play games. Don't references. play games. You said history. You said you agree with the history, and this is the correct way. Yes. And this is why no. you quote for me history. So now I'm asking you for the last time, if I show you from the Quran that Nasara is not coming from the word Nazareth, what you will do? 
That is what I want you to understand that you may misinterpret it. You may misinterpret it because Quran is also a reference to my book. Let me bring my proof as a reference from the history. In historical, we have historical, we have reference purpose to, to prove a point. Let me bring the Quran also. I have Bible to prove my point. I have Quran to prove my point. I have Hadith to prove my point. I know okay. what I'm saying. Okay. Let me bring uh, but I am the one who asked you, is it in the Quran it says that the Christian, the Nasara is coming from Nazareth? You said it's not from the Quran, correct? I said, I said that's the word I, the statement I brought is not that Quran says Nazareth. No, 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 no. Quran never okay. says so. so I'm asking but you now. Quran also do you confirm Quran for the last time? Don't don't waste my time, my friend. For the last time, okay. you said that the word Nazareth is coming. The word Nasara coming from the word Nazareth, and this is what history proved. So you believe in this? This is the truth, correct? Okay, proceed, proceed. Okay, no, don't tell me proceed, proceed. You said okay, that's mean. This is what you believe. Don't change your mind after two seconds. Do you agree? Mm. Hello? Do you agree that, are you sure, are you confirming that the word Nasara is coming from the word Nazareth? Uh, okay. Do I you said, agree? Say I, I said, agree. Say I agree. Yes, 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 All right. yes, yes. I we go to the Quran, saying. guys. Remember, he said that. So if he says something else in two seconds from now, that means this guy is not honest and he don't deserve even to speak to me for a second. If we go in the Quran, <laughs> don't, well, okay. Hello, hello, if we go in the Quran, hello, you prove your just point. wait, don't, just wait. Okay, okay, okay. Everybody will be laughing. Let us see. Let us see. <laughs> the Quran said that Isa said. I know where you are. Hold on. Chapter three, verse fifty-two. I know where you are going. Quran fifty-two, three fifty-two. It's part of my point. Abdul, Abdul. What chapter? What? Quran chapter 3 verse 52. Yeah, you heard me talking to that I'm guy, right? Up. Okay, hold on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. because you heard me to talking to your, to your to your master yes, before. Watched, okay, I've here in front of I've us watched. it says that the Mess the Messiah Isa he said to them, Who want to be Ansari illallah? What Ansari mean? What Ansari mean? Hello? What I'm sorry mean? I'm asking you what I'm sorry mean. Yes. What the word see, what, anybody's that what the word I'm sorry yeah, mean. Go ahead. That's what I want to say. I mm. say anybody that follows that believes in a particular prophet. Anzar means helper. I think you are an Arabic. I'm sorry, an Arabic I'm, I'm sorry mean what? Yeah. Yes. Those that help, when you help in the course of doing something, literally. Okay. So what Nasara mean? I'm sorry. Wait, what Nasara mean then? If uh, if Nas if, if, Nas Nasara, if Ansar, Nasara. Ansar mean helper, what Nasara mean? Yeah. No, now Nasara is a particular. I, I a particular lost you. I lost you. Say again. Nasara, say again. The, the genesis of Nasara is not from Arabic. Mm. What I do is this. What is what what is your reference for this verse? Do you have a do you have an interpretation we can read together? Confirm me what you will say to us. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It's something you understand well. It's something you understand well. I will tell you if it is no, let me know. If it is not what you believe, let me know. Now, what I want to prove is what God wants to confirm. God, my friend, languages. don't prove to me what you prove. Don't give me your interpretation. Which is scholar you want me to show you in the screen so we can read together? About. About, about Nasara. what Nasara is about, what the word Nasara came in from, where is the word yeah. Nasara is coming from, what word Ansar and Nasara came in from, what interpretation yeah. would you like me to show you? Yeah, the, the first thing I want you to understand is this hmm. if you don't know the genesis of it, my friend, stop playing games. What the word Nasara, what interpretation? Because you can talk until tomorrow, give me your own opinion, which is farting and nothing but gas. You are not a scholar. You do not even know how to talk in Arabic. You don't speak Arabic. Ah, so, don't, so don't now I'm asking I'm you, scholar. which is scholar? Which is scholar? Which is scholar? Agree with you, please. Why I want you to understand one thing is this, my friend. Don't tell me I want if to understand. Which is scholar in Islam and agree <laughs> with you? Are you saying to me that you are the only scholar in Islam who believe that the word Nasara came from Nazareth? Hello, hello. This hello, hello. Talk about no, no, scholar we are talking about a scholar. We are talking we are about scholar talking. because you are fabricating stories. Don't tell me that you are the only Muslim who believe in this. Show me the scholar who agree with you. But but I had your video when you said you be also believe that Nasara are different from Christian. You said my it. friend, yes, this when is talking, because I'm proving Muhammad is a false prophet. 
Oh my God! You believe Musa is from Christian? You believe it? I'm it's talking like about your Quran. Oh your God. Quran here is proving you to stupid. You stupid. For me, I believe that Nasara are the Christians. They are cult. This is Why a cult. This is a no, cult so like Muhammad. Are, uh, Muhammad, Muhammad is Nasara. Muhammad is Nasara. Muhammad, he married from Khadija. In order to marry from Nasara, you have to be get baptism like them, and you have to be one of them. You cannot marry Nasara unless you are Nasara. Khadija was Nasara. Yes or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. How Muhammad marry Khadija if he is not Nasara like her? Yeah, thank you. Do you want me to respond now? Okay, go ahead. Now there is a time where God give permission to marry. God allows us. Quran chapter five verse five. He allows Muslim to marry Nasara to marry Jews. There is there is an agreement which God gives. Can you read that, please? Quran five verse five. No, answer me first. He gave a permission to marry Nasara. Yeah. yeah, yeah. God gave permission to marry Nasara. My friend, my friend Abdul, are you stupid or what? Muhammad he married Khadija before he became a prophet. Hello. Don't abuse me, please. My, Don't you're abuse a prophet. Me. You're a prophet because you are slow. Why you say to me, Allah, He gave him permission when He married her long before He became a prophet? So Muhammad, He gave him permission by Allah to marry Khadija. What you don't understand is God is is a protected God. He has protected Muhammad because he knows what is going to. What tell protected him Muhammad? I'm asking you. you I'm asking you. How protected Muhammad married Muhammad. Khadija? You said to me, Allah gave him permission, but Muhammad at that time he don't. He's not. He's not a Muslim. Thank you, because God knows that He knows He knows where He's taking him to. What God? He God knows, what are you talking about? I ask you. I ask you. How Muhammad he marry from a Nasara if he is not a Nasara? Hello, you said to me, hello. Allah. He, you my are time, the one who said time, to me. You are the one who said to me. Allah gave him permission. Where is the permission? Show me. I said Quran five hours five. But this is long. You, this you, is you, long after Abdul. What's wrong with you? I'm talking about Khadija before Muhammad became a prophet. Thank you. There, there is never a revelation. There is never a revelation before Muhammad married Khadija. There is never any revelation that says do not marry. Okay, so how Muhammad he married Khadija then? He is if he is not a Nasara, how he marry her? To marry a Nasara, you have to be a Nasara. They don't marry someone is not Nasara. In fact, Khadija was never a Nasara. She was not. Yeah, Khadija was never a Nasara. Are you sure? Yeah, historical. Give me point. Give me proof. Give me proof. Why why Khadija becomes okay, a Nasara? Okay, here we go. Where's we'll the proof? Again. I'm waiting. Okay, Let's if go. I show you a proof, what you will do? Let's go. Open your proof. Forget if about I give I you a proof, what you will do? Uh, what is, I will read it. I will because take you, you know, you, each time I show you a proof, you jump like a monkey. Here we go. We show you the verse. You start giving me your interpretation. I say to you, which interpretation you like us to show you? You don't want to. You don't. You don't want to uh, quote any interpretation because you know you are a false person. You are fabricating stories. So I'm asking you nicely and kindly. If I show you. That Khadija was Nasara. What you will do? Hello. If Hello? I show you that Khadija was Nasara, what you will do? I don't understand what what you will do. I am asking you because you are saying to me Khadija was not Nasara. So if only uh, either you are speaking based on stupidity and ignorance, or you are speaking based on knowledge. So which one you choose? Hello? 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 Hello, hello. Okay. I said I don't understand what, what you What the religion what of Khadija? I'm asking you, what is the religion of Khadija? Please be honest. What you Muslims believe the religion of Khadija? Are you there? Are you, Why is this are you there? Are you there? What was the religion of Khadija, my friend? Can you tell me, please? Hello, please. You said you want to prove something again. You asked I, I am asking you, what no. was the religion of Khadija according to Islam? Can you give me the answer? Yeah, Khadija was Jew. Khadija was a Jew. Okay, here we go. I yeah. want you to okay. show everybody here that Khadija was a Jew. And if you can show me that, I will apologize from you. I will say I learned from this guy something I never heard from before, and he is a scholar. He is my teacher. Can you show me that? 
Hello, hello. I have a point, please. Stop playing that games. Point, Stop saying yeah. hello, hello. You hear me and I hear you. I want I'm you not, to show I'm me. Not, I, I want you, you to I show me. To Hold on. Question. I want you to show me where you got this lie that Khadija was a Jew. Where you got that Khadija, she was a Jew. Can you prove to me that Khadija was also no sorrow? I can. But as yeah, long as long uh, you mention that she let, is a Jew, see, I want to show everybody that you are a specific. I don't want to. I don't want to insult you. But if you could not prove it to me, you have to admit that you are a certified donkey. Do you agree? Hello. Don't stop, don't stop abusing. I am I not abusing. I, I am I giving you a name you deserve you. You because you either you are lying or you are saying the truth. So if you are lying, do you agree to say yeah. I was lying? You yes or no? Deviated. Do you know you have deviated from our points? I said no. So I'm no, asking you. I'm 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 asking you. Where you can show me that Khadija she was a Hebrew. You, I know one thing about you. What you do is you will take away someone from a topic that we are deliberating. I am on. not. You are the one forcing me to go there. You are the one who mentioned. You are the one who You are the one who mentioned that Khadija she was not Nasara, and you are the one who mentioned that she was a Jew. Show us, show us how she was a Jew. You are a big fat liar. Every Muslim is listening. Is laughing at you. Hello. Every Muslim is listening. Is is laughing at you. Can you show me the proof that Khadija she was? A Jew. That is what I told you. That those that lives then were never Christian with Muhammad. They were rather Jew or Nasoro. Now, do you this know that the question, Jew Abdul? Also, I want hello, you to show hello, me the reference. Hello. I want you to show me the hello. reference. Stop saying hello. You, you, are, be, you are a big fat liar. Show me where the Muslim believe. Don't show me what reference. Now. Show me what reference. You are you are a big fat liar you like your don't prophet. Call me a liar. You see, you are a liar. Don't then show me. Liar. Okay, I I'm not going to don't talk. Call me a liar. I want you to show me the Islam reference. Show me the reference. Show me the reference. Islam doesn't permit you to abuse. Show me the reference. Islam doesn't permit you to abuse. Show me the reference. You are a liar. Otherwise, you have to. Shut me up! Don't you have to show me the difference. Me, let me prove myself. Okay, prove to me that Karija is a. Is, you, is a you, you, yeah, no, me, you are the one who said she is a Jew. I want to show everybody first, you first that said, you are a big fat liar, and then I will show my reference. That? I want you to show us what where you, you get this from. Where you got? Where you got this information, Abdul? Where you got this information that Khadija she was a Jew? Hello, I know you are trying. I know you are trying to run for me. Don't I'm run running for I'm sure. Show us Hello? as long as you are sure. Show I us where you get information point. that Khadija she was a Jew. Run away from our point. Can you tell me the Khadija, Khadija was a Jew? Was a Jew. Show us where Khadija she was That's a Jew. My question, my question today. Wait now, don't run. Now. Shut up, a donkey, and let me show you that Khadija she was a Christian or Nasara. You are a big fat liar, and everybody will listen to this video will laugh at you. Don't call me again. No, don't call me again. Don't call me again, you stupid idiot. Any Muslim is listening, he will be laughing at you. Anyone can go right now and search about Khadija. Was Khadija she was a Christian? All the Muslim they say is. You are an official liar and you have no dignity. And let us show you how oh, Khadija she was in Asara. What a stupid idiot. When Muhammad he saw the first time an angel in the Ghar of Hara, the cave of Hara, which is a very funny, stupid story. Khadija she took him, she took Muhammad. To a man, his name Waraka ibn Nawfal, and this is her uncle. And all their family are Nasara. And actually, according to Muslims, he is the one who married her to Muhammad. Read carefully with me. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, Muslim cannot say to us, this is a weak hadith. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 6982. 
Khadija, she came to Waraka and she said to him, <clears throat> Oh, my cousin, and Waraka, he was a person who converted to Nasara and he was translating the gospel into Arabic, and that is the Quran. And Waraka ibn Nawfal is the real father of Muhammad, the physical father by blood of Muhammad. This is why everything about Islam, about Muhammad, you find it with Waraka. And this is why when Waraka he died, Muhammad he tried to commit suicide many times. Here we read together that Khadija she came to Waraka, who is supposedly Nasara, in Arabic does not say he is a Christian. It's say Nasara. And here you notice how the Muslims they deceive you when they translate. They translate the word Nasara as a Christian, but when they want the word Nasara is not a Christian. When they want the word Nasara is a Christian. Why? Because they want to deceive you, believe, make you believe we Islam, we believe in Christianity. But Christianity of Islam, we believe in Nasara, they are Christians. But the fact they are not. Nasara is nothing but a cult like Jehovah's Witnesses. So he used to translate the gospel into Arabic, and this is the Quran. And this is the family of Khadija. And you will see here when the real father of Muhammad he died. Muhammad he tried to commit suicide many times. Read carefully with me. Waraka died, and the divine inspiration was also posed. Waraka, he died, there is no more Quran coming. Why? Why? Because Muhammad now do not know what to do. Waraka, his father, the one giving him the Quran, is not there, he's dead. But hold on. Waraka, he have a book, he was translating. He making a summary, it's called Quran. And this is what the Quran is about. So when Muhammad, he heard that his father died, Muhammad, he never received Quran after that and then Muhammad he for he, he decided to commit suicide so the Prophet becomes sad and as we heard he intended several times to throw himself from the top of high mountains and every time he went to the top of the mountain in order to throw himself down Gabriel or Jibreel would appear before him and say oh Muhammad you are indeed Allah messenger And then, in truth, and then Muhammad, his heart will become a quiet and he calmed down and he changed his mind from Cain himself. But then the inspiration of Allah stopped again. And Muhammad, he decided to throw himself again and again and again and again and again. And each time he tried to suicide himself, Jibreel, he come to him and he said to him the same as before. So here we notice that Waraka, who is the one who married Khadija to Muhammad, is an Asara. Muhammad, he tried to commit suicide because one of the Nasara, he died. The one who announced Muhammad to be a, a prophet of God is an Asara. And he is one of those who believe that the Messiah is the Son of God. How somebody believe that the Messiah is son of God? He is the one who announced Muhammad to be a prophet of God. Because in the beginning, the plan was to make Muhammad a Nasara or a prophet for the Nasara, not a new religion. He would just will be a Nasara. But then when the Nasara rejected Muhammad, Waraka he died and Muhammad was not convincing to anyone. Obviously, he is nothing but a scam. Muhammad he took different approach. He start, started to say he is a Jew. And we just heard this guy saying that Khadija she was a Jew. But if I give him 1,000 years from now to give us reference to say where Khadija she was a Jew, he will not find us a reference. Not even 
one reference they lie they fabricate if we go right now and we search in Google was Khadija a Nasara or a Christian you will see not a single Islamic website disagree that she is not a Nasara or a Christian not a single one For me, the Nasara are nothing but a cult. But you notice here, this guy, he mentioned something very important, that the, the Nasara are not the Christians. But the whole Quran never mentioned anything except the Nasara. But the Nasara in the Quran is the same one who believed that Jesus is the Son of God. This is not different Nasara. There's only one Nasara in the Quran. Chapter 9, verse number 30. It says, The Jews says, Hosea, not Ezra. You see the Muslim day false translation trying to find the name in the Bible so we can say, oh, okay, this is the guy we are talking about. In the Bible, there's not such a name. It's called Hosea. So they make it Ezra. There's no Ezra. In Arabic, it says Hosea. The Jews, they say, Hosea is the son of Allah and the Nasara say the Messiah is the son of Allah So what the Nasara are are people who believe that the Messiah is the son of Allah There's no two Nasara. There's no three Nasara in the Quran That's why the verse in the front of us says the Nasara not some of the Nasara The Jews not some of the Jews so the Jews they say that Uzair is a son of Allah and the Nasara say that the Messiah is the son of Allah not some of the Nasara not some of the Jews Muhammad he did not speak about two kind of Nasara there's only word used for that because if Nasara are not a true Christian then he should name the other Christian if Nasara are the true Christian and there is other cult, then he should name the other cult. But he used only one name for the one who followed Jesus and he called them Ansari. When we ask this Abdul, what is the interpretation when Jesus said, uh, who is my uh, Ansar? He said, do you know what Ansar mean? You know, you, you watch my video. I am the one who taught you, idiot. I was scoring your, your, your teacher. If we go right now, and we search Islamic website, see what the word Nasara mean. You will be surprised that all of them, they will get those stupid idiot busted. I cannot believe it. How they have no dignity to the point they are willing to lie and say that Khadija, she was a Jew. He was just trying to escape. He thought he can run away and he say, okay, here we go. The second you say to a Muslim, what about we go and we see what the word Nasara mean according to your Islamic interpretation? He don't want to read that. Suddenly, Nasara is a word coming from the word Nazareth. And by the way, I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm saying that this is this is what Nasara is coming from. Nazareth is not the word Nasara, which means Nazareth the city. Nazareth or Nazarian is the word mean the poor. The Christians, the true Christian, they call this cult Nazareth, for they are 
poor not poor in money they are poor of understanding the religion the poor not from the word Nasira the true Christians they will be called the follower of the Nazareth which mean the Messiah himself will be called Nazareth for supposedly he is from there If there is any Muslim who is listening to this conversation, and if you like to call me, and you like to tell us what is the word Nasara is coming from, if you agree with those liars or you are a true Muslim, give me a call. Remember, if you call me, you have to prove what you say. Don't tell me historian. You are a Muslim who don't believe in anything except the book of Allah. Historian does not speak about Nasara and the Arabian Peninsula to be Christians historian never mentioned the word Isa historian never mentioned that Mary is the daughter of Amran your stupid God he think that Mary she is the daughter of Amran and Moses is the son of Amran and Aaron is the son of Amran so now we have a family, sister and a brother, Moses and Aaron and Miriam. And this is why Muhammad in the Quran, he says, oh, sister of Aaron. When the Nasara, or sorry, the Jews, they get him busted. And Kabul Ahbar, he said to Aisha, well, this is can't be true because I, in what I know, there's a couple of hundred of years between Aaron and Mary. Aisha, she said to him, Kadhabt, you are a liar. When they told Muhammad about this, Muhammad he told them I they used to told to tell uh, their their uh, uh, their children by the good ones of their ancestors M but why by Aaron who is Aaron what about Moses what what do you mean Aaron what about isn't it the Quran says call them by the name of their father and how can the Muslims who say historian Except that the Quran he called the name of the father of Mary wrong and how they can tell us how the name of the father of Mary became the same exact name of the father of Moses The answer is very simple in the Old Testament the Bible says that there's a three children's Maryam and Aaron and Moses and they are brothers and sister but this is not Maryam, the mother of Jesus. Now, just to show you that this donkey is certified donkey, I will shut him up from his prophet teaching. Remember, he said that the word Nasara, and he is copying his master, the guy we got him busted before. It's coming from the city of Nazareth. So, how do you explain your prophet saying the following? He said every baby is born in a fitra, which means he's born as a Muslim, but his parents they made him a Yahudi or Nasara. <laughs> So every baby, it doesn't matter which baby. Guys, do you see what I'm saying? Do you see how easy we can get them busted? You're a prophet, he said, every child, every child in the world, not only in Arabian Peninsula, any child, every child is born as a Muslim, but his parents, they made him Yahudi, which means a Jew, or you make him Nasara. They make him Nasara. He is not born in Nazareth. They make him Nasara.
so that's mean where you are born have nothing to do where are you coming from this is a name about a belief or make him a mushrik and here by the way Muhammad he get himself busted again when Muhammad he said that everyone is born as by fatra as a Muslim and then his parents they make him a Jew Jew there's nothing it's called a Jew by the way in Arabic it says Yahud Yahudi is not a Jew this is coming from the word Yahuda the Judah do you know what the Judah mean but your prophet the idiot he did not know what he's talking about the Judah they made him Judah or they made him Nasara or they made him polytheist. Guys, do you see the word? Or a polytheist. When Muhammad he said that, he was believing that the Judah and the Nasara are not polytheist. Do you see it? Because if the Jews and the Nasara are polytheist, they don't say or. Are we listening? Who don't understand what I'm saying? No, we are the blocking Muslims. You are a liar. You can't call me. He said to me that Khadija, she was a Jew. I asked him to show me the reference. He refused to get, get lost. And I challenge any Muslim to say to me he agree that Khadija, she was a Jew. Who is a Muslim agree that Khadija was a Jew? Either you have to say that he is a liar or you have to say he is saying the truth. Who is a Muslim have the courage to call me and we will record his voice is going to be published in YouTube and he will say he agree with this Nigerian guy. He said Khadija, she was a Jew. Any Muslim? At the Gona Isa and black me first. Okay, well, let's see your name. I got the Gona Isa. Aren't you the same guy with different name? You are not blocked. Oh, hold on. You are blocked. Okay. Call me at the Gona Isa so we can love together. And remember, if you want to say something, you have to show me the reference. Call me. At the Gona, I'm waiting. Go ahead, my friend. Hello. Do you agree that Khadija she was a Jew? Yeah. Okay, can you show me the reference? I, I, yeah, yeah. Let's go online. Let's go online. We are online. Can you show me the reference? Uh, let's go. Go on Google. Go, go. www. Dot. I'm giving you a reference. Now. Oh, give me the link. Give me the link. Link. How could I get that? I don't know how to do that. Pause the link. Pause the link. Give me no, the reference. Okay. 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 Give me the reference. What www? Give me the reference. What is w the name of the book? What is the name of the w book? What is the scholar who is who is the one is talking? Go ahead. 
I even want to show you from your, your Christian people now, from your Christian people. My friend, don't, you give, uh, uh, show me hello. where you got Can that Khadija. Get, no, you see, you are a Muslim, you are a liar, you are a liar. There's no Christian, no. there's nothing is called a Christian than you about Khadija that she is a Jew. This is a lie. Now show me the reference. Show me the reference for you as a Muslim. When you say to me, so are you saying to me you are learning about Khadija from the, from the Christians? Let's read now. Are you there? Are you saying w to me you are learning from the Christians that Khadija she was a Jew? Let me just send the link to you, please. I get I'm asking you, are you saying to me you learn about your prophet and his wife from the Christians? Stop arguing, please. Please so you are you are a liar again. So you have no reference. Do you have a Don't reference? Don't call me a liar. Don't call me a liar. Because you, you do you are a liar. Show me the reference. Give me the name of the book. Give me the name of the scholar, and we are laughing. Give me the name of the book. Which page Stop and what the scholar? Me. Who are you arguing? Can you please show me? I don't want to scream again. Can you show me the reference? Uh -huh. Take it easily. Take it easily. Okay, read the reference for us. Read, read the reference for us, please. Yeah, I'm giving you the link. W W. Give me the reference. Show me. No, read the reference for me. The reference. I'm re I'm bringing from Wikipedia. Read it. Read it. Wikipedia. I can make a Wikipedia. Are you a donkey? I can go right now and make a page in Wikipedia. I say whatever I want. It's a Wikipedia. Give me the reference, please. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Hmm. It is Khalidia bin Kawalid. Are you there? I am here. Uh -huh. yeah, let's go. Hmm. I said history the other time. You hug you. Read for me. Yeah. Hmm. How to read the text? Uh, let me let me show you. Let me let me try and bring <laughs> it to you. Give me the reference, Abdul. Don't stop being stupid. Don't waste my time. Give me the name of the book I'm, and who is the I'm author. Not, I'm not wasting your time. So it is not. Said, it's not a book. It's not an author. It's a page in the internet. Is that correct? It's not a book. Let me tell you the topic. It's not a book. It's not a book. Is it a book? Is it a is it a book? Is it a book or not? A link, a link, a link. I don't, a I link, don't care for the. Link. Give me the name of the book, the reference. Stop being stupid. What is the name of the book? If I say you are stupid, is that not an abuse? My don't friend, you are the stupid are you because mad? you have no reference. I can post you anything mad? in the internet right now. Give me the name of the book. Now, so you are saying to me. So let let, 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 let me let us make it clear. Let us make it clear. You are saying to me the link saying Khadija she was a Jew, but doesn't say there where they got from. Correct. Is that they are is saying it? that Khadija she was a Jew, but they don't say what Historic. where this is coming from. Historically, Khadija Arabic. What my friend, my ah, uh, stop Let being stupid. Historically, are... okay, give me the reference of the history. When you say historically, it means this is mentioned from a book of history. Can you give me the name of the book? According to the tradition, according to the tradition, she became the get lost, you donkey, son of Muta. And you tell me, you people, you tell me, have patient. www 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 Stupid people. Give me the reference. WWW. According to history. Okay, what history? As long as it's history, it means there's a book. Which book? Have you ever heard of a history? How I go back in history unless there is reference for the history? The second you say to me history, it means this is coming from a book written about history. Which book? I will WWW potatoes. All the Muslims are laughing at you, Nigerian. There's no Muslim in the world agree that Khadija she was a Jew, you donkey. Shame on you. Same time, if Khadija she was a Jew, that's mean Muhammad was a Jew, you donkey. Because the Jews 
will not marry a Jewish daughter to non-Jews. So do you see how you do poo poo? So you thought you saved yourself from Khadija being Nasara, and now we say Khadija being a Jew. If this is the case, that means Muhammad was a Jew. The Jews don't marry from the Christians or Nasara, and the Nasara don't marry from the Jews. Because before you perform marriage, you have to do baptism, which means you have to become part of their belief. This is how stupid the Muslims when they try to fabricate the stories. They fabricate a lie, and then the lie they fabricated now, they need a thousand lies to cover it. WWW. Well, nice to meet you, Mr. WWW. What the name of the book? WWW. History according to tradition. What tra according to tra the tradition? What tradition? And as you see, you idiot, you're a prophet saying that everyone is born in Fitra, and then his parents they made him a Huda or made him a Nasara. So Nasara have nothing to do, you being coming from Nazareth. Nasara is the name of the belief. And the parents make you in such a belief. And by the way, this is stupid to say. Anyone knows why? Anyone knows why? When Muhammad is say that it is the parents, everyone is born as a Muslim, and then the parents, they made him either a Jew or Nasara or polytheist. So how you explain to me Muslims leave Islam? Because he did not give third option. Correct? Muhammad is making it clear that you are the fruit of your parents. So if your parents are Nasara, they will make you Nasara, but you are born as a Muslim. Now, how we explain then someone is born as a Muslim from a Muslim family and yet he leave Islam? His family, they made him uh, leave Islam? Maybe this is uh, what Wokabidia says, WWW. By the way, I don't mind if somebody wanna show me from Wokabidia, but it have to have reference. You can quote from me from Wokabidia, no problem. There's many pages in Wokabidia, it's very nice done. Wokabidia is anyone, can, you, can, you can make an account now and you can go and change. And then they approve it for you. And then if people complain, they change it. Me, myself, somebody created a page for me in Wakabidia, and then Wakabidia take it down because they wanted my uh, you know, they want my ID. You know, they take it down. One of you created a page for me in Wakabidia. Wakabidia, they ask him, okay, we want the identity of this person so we can keep him as an author, we understand. He had many books, we understand. He's very well known, we understand. But we want a proof. Who is he? So now if I go to Wakabidia too, and I find you that Khadija, she was not a Jew, you accept? Stupidity versus stupidity. Do we have any Abdul? Anyone?
the funny uh, since I was a kid all the Muslim they say that Khadijah she was a Nasara and then you start hearing those funny dummy people who don't even speak Arabic suddenly they want to school us about who is Khadija any Abdul when I call us Anyone? Who is a Muslim would like to call and confirm to us either those Muslims are idiot or they are really Muslims saying the truth? Any Muslim? You will not find one Muslim agree with those idiots. Nasara is coming from Nazareth. This is what this is what we say. This is what we should say, not you. You donkey. You are speaking against your Quran. However, the word Nasara, the Nasara who they are in the Arabian Peninsula are not Nazareth. This is totally different statement according to your prophet. However, According to what I believe, that the word Nasara is coming from the Nazareth, those or Nazar Nazareth Na Nazaran, which is the word meaning the poor. It's not about a city, which mean the poor in understanding the belief. So those are people they are rejected from the Christians, and they call them the poor. And again, not poor because they don't have money. But because they have poor understanding of a Christianity, so they were rejected, and this is why they've been kicked out actually from the area where the true Christians they believe. This is why they went away from any place have to to be under the control of the true Christians. This is why we find Nasara are exist in the Arabian Peninsula. Because simply, Christians there don't have a con control. Same as the Jews, they run away and they escape either to Arabian Peninsula or to Persia. Why the Jews they escape? Because when in uh, uh, through history, the Jews they were betraying the Roman. And I understand the Roman they were their enemy but this is not only about Roman as religion as, as Roman now it became something about religion so they decide to take a side against the Christians whoever want to fight the Christians the Jews they take a side with them so when the Persian in 1640 or 6, 640 they attack Jerusalem one of the reasons for the Persian to take and conquer Jerusalem it was the Jews so when the Roman they took back Jerusalem 
they kicked out anyone actually the Jews themselves they run away they run away with the Persian but they did not allow anyone who is a Jew even to stay this is why the Jews they run away to any area and at any territory it is not under the Roman control after they betray the Roman and they join the Persian in their war they decide you know the Roman they decide to punish them for what they did no it's okay he can call me names don't worry about him he's a kid if, if you if you don't want a Muslim to call me names that he might explode let him call me names but can he can he prove us wrong look we are talking for the last two hours and we're asking him where do you get the word Khadija is a Jew he cannot find us but even if he say Khadija is a Jew he's a donkey because Khadija if he, she is a Jew that means Muhammad was a Jew because Muhammad cannot marry from a woman she is a Jew unless she is a Jew he's a Jew Muhammad after he claimed to be a prophet and he conquer he can marry a Jew because simply he he kidnapped her from her her, her family like what he did to Sophia he raped her he did not marry her later he made her a wife but if you want to marry legally from a Jew you have to be a Jew so now he is saying to us that his prophet was a Jew and actually Muhammad he tried his his uh, he worked hard to be by the way to prove that he's a Jew this is why Muhammad he took an shahada saying that he's a Jew Muhammad he did all his part trying to convince the Jews that he is a Jew be careful with me he said to them bring me the Torah bring me the Torah the Jews they bring him the Torah bring the Torah and it was then brought to him to who to him who Muhammad then he would draw the cushion from beneath him and place the Torah on it is on it saying I believed in thee and in him who revealed thee Muhammad he just took Shahada claiming that he is a Jew because now he believed in Yahweh not in Allah he believed in Torah not in the Quran who is the one who sent the Torah? If the Muslim, they will say that he is Allah, well, not according to the Jews. There's nowhere in the Torah the word Allah does appear. So, and regardless if it is sent by Allah or by someone else, as long you say, I believe in thee, and the one who revealed thee, that's mean the, the, the Torah is not corrupt, and this is a true book of God, and Muhammad is not abrogating Judaism he is a follower of Judaism and as long as the Quran says in chapter 9 verse number 30 that the Christian they say uh, the Jews they say that Uzair is a son of Allah that's mean he believe in that because this is what it says there supposedly even the Quran says that the Christians and the Jews they say we are the sons of Allah and we are his beloved one the Quran says well if you are his sons and his beloved ones so why Allah he punish you because of your sin so Muhammad here he says he believe in the Torah which teach that we are the children of God but this is totally against Islam so either Muhammad here is being hypocrite trying to convince the Jew that he is a Jew and he don't mean his oath he's a liar or he mean it does mean he is not a Muslim now who is a Muslim here he can call us and tell us that Khadija she was a Jew
Anyone? Anyone I blocked, I blocked for a reason. He must be a stupid idiot. You see, as you see, I give them all the time, and then I am not going to waste my time screaming. We are scholars, not kids. When you mention something to me, you have to prove it. When you say to me the word Nasara came in from Nazareth, you have to show me the reference. So remember, you are a Muslim, you are not a Christian. You don't tell me it says in the Bible that will be used against you. You don't tell me this is history. Well, history says that there is somebody who was crucified. His name is Jesus, not Asa. History does not say that uh, Musa, he saw a Pharisee. Uh, sorry, a, 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 what the word? A, a summary. If we go in history, look at the stupidity here. As long as you are talking about history. A summary was exist in the time of Moses. <laughs> are you sure? Who is the donkey he told you that? As long as you are a Wikipedia person, do you like to go to Wikipedia and do some search? So we can laugh together? The Samaritan. Moses, he was talking to the Samaritan? Are you sure? Well, the Quran says so. There's no way the Quran he will make such a mistake. Can you find us in WWW the reference for that? Huh, Abdul? Moses, people, and Moses, he spoke to the Samaritan? Unbelievable. What a donkey. And by the way, this is mentioned in many places, not like only one place. It's mentioned in chapter 8, uh, uh, ch chapter 20, uh, uh, 85, uh, uh, chapter 29, 39, chapter 28, verse number 8. I mean, it's all over. One it says the Samaritan, he was exist in the time of Moses, and he spoke even to Moses, or the Samaritan spoke to, to, to Moses. And the other one says that Haman was the minister of Pharaoh. But Haman have nothing to do with the, the Babylon. I mean, with the with, with the with the Egyptian. This is a minister of the Babylonian, the Assyrian. How Haman became a minister to the the Pharaoh. In chapter twenty nine, verse number thirty nine. Uh, there is a guy. His name is Qarun in Arabic, which means Aaron, I think, in English. And and Haman, both of them, they are Egyptian. But those are not Egyptian. Aaron was a Jew, an Israeli.
the one who made uh, the Jews worship a cow is a Samiri the one who made the people of Moses worship the cow is a Samiri how in the world that happened And then the poor Aaron, he was trying to guide them back because the Samaritan, the Samaritan, he is, uh, he did fool them. <laughs> WWW. WW. Any W? No, you gave us no point. I changed you to give us the point. Here you go. Show show us in the text in the reference so we can laugh. If you are really giving us a point. Is that fair, guys? If you can show us in the text the reference, I will call I will call you myself. Show me the name of the book which says Khadija she was a Jew. When I say something to you, I say Ibn Kathir he said, I say Al Qurtubi said, I say Al Tabari said, I say, I say, I say, I give the reference, I say the hadith of Sahih al Bukhari, number, etc. Give me the reference. Sure, see, we go, I'm waiting for you. You are just a kid. Potato. Keep crying. Everybody is laughing at you and, and and your recording will stay in YouTube and people will laugh at you and one day your son will grow and he will say my daddy You told the Christian Prince that Khadija she was a Jew. That's mean the Prophet was a Jew brother Baba Coward potato Khadija was a Jew. That's mean Muhammad was a Jew. That's mean the father of Khadija was a Jew. What the tribe of Khadija? The tribes of the Jews are mentioned in Islamic books. Which tribe? Her tribe. If Khadija was a Jew, that's mean her uncle was a Jew too. And her father was a Jew. By the way, Khadija, she was Nasara, but she was a whore. And I can prove it easy. I can show you from your Islamic books how Khadija, she made the, her father get drunk in order to make him believe that he married her to Muhammad. Who want to challenge me to prove the reference? You see, here we don't say WW. We give the names. Of the Islamic books, Islamic books, not Christian books. Who is a Muslim I challenge me to show the reference? And I will make you read it yourself. She made her father drunk, and the man, when he woke up, he told her they changed his clothes. They made they made the they made the father drunk, and when he is drunk, they change his clothes. So the guy he woke up, he says, Why am I wearing those clothes? You know, the Arab, when they uh, when they have an occasion which is very normal i mean even now if you have a wedding you wear different clothes right so <coughs> when he woke up he was wearing the expensive clothes which he wear only in occasion so he was saying what happened why i'm wearing those clothes she said you forgot I said what i said yesterday it was my wedding and you married me to muhammad i did not marry you to muhammad and actually, he took his, his his sword and he wanted to go and kill Muhammad because Muhammad is not qualified to marry his daughter. Neither his family. Then Khadir said to him, what do you want to say, people? They will make you a joke. They will say you were drunk and you married me to Muhammad and you are not aware? Khadija, she was a Jew.
Let me show the reference so the Muslim will not say I'm making things up. You know them. This is the book of Musnad Ahmad. Let me open here this website here. Don't play in this browser correctly. This is the book of Musnad Ahmad. Print 1993-1414. The book name, Musnad Ahmad. Musnad Bani Hashim. Reference, 2846. Read and laugh. This is not Wikipedia. This is Islam. Library dot Islam web dot net, and this is the book of Muslim Ahmad. Had Dathana it mentioned by etc. by Ibn Abbas etc. that the Messenger of Allah uh, he mentioned Khadija and he was and her, her father he. Uh, uh, he don't like to marry her to him so Khadija she made a drink and food which means she made a like a meal I mean let us say a party invitation uh, in Arabic we say Walima so she made a lot of food and drink and she invited her father and many people from the tribe of Quraysh and Khadija, she is from the tribe of Quraysh, you idiot. How she can be a Jew? The Jews are not converted people to Judaism. The Jews are born from the children of Jacob, according to the Quran. This is why the Quran called them, O children of Israel, you donkey. So in order for Khadija to be a Jew, she have to be from the children of Israel, you donkey, not from Quraysh. So she made a lot of a drink and a lot of food and she invited her father and a lot of people and they drank and they ate, says here, فَطَعِمُوا وَشَرِبُوا حَتَّى ثَمِلُوا So they ate and drank and, and drink until they drank. And then Khadija, she said to her father, Muhammad is asking for my hand and he want me to marry her. He want me to marry, to marry him. The guy is drunk. Huh? He said, oh, okay, all right, drunk, totally drunk. And then she took off his clothes and she dressed him with the, with the clothes of wedding as they used to do the fathers in the case of wedding. And when he woke up from his uh, uh, being a drunk, he found himself wearing such a clothes. And he said, what is that? Masha'ni. What's wrong? Why am I wearing those clothes? He said, what do you mean, what is this? You yesterday, you married me to Muhammad, the son of Abdullah. He said, I married the orphan, the son of Abu Talib to you. I swear by Allah, I will never accept that. Khadija, she said, aren't you ashamed? Do you want people to make fun of you? To read and to suffer nafsaka in the Quraysh. Do you want the, the tribe of Quraysh to make fun of you? And you will say to them that you were drunk when you married me to him. And she did insist talking to him with this until he shut up and he accept. Now, who is the Muslim? He will say, I was, I am lying. That is Khadija, my friend. Obviously, she is a whore. The marriage of Muhammad was based on wine and party. 
the first thing Muhammad he did in his life it was a fraud the father did not marry Khadija to Muhammad you see what I'm saying even the marriage of Muhammad was a fraud now who is a Muslim when I call me and say I'm lying challenge yeah you are the one who have IQ the one who believed that the Prophet said whoever come first the baby will resemble the father or you are the one who is smart because you believe the Quran saying the backbone is where the sperm coming from or the hail is coming from mountains in heaven or the baby was a sperm and became a congealed the blood and then Allah made him a loop and then he made him bones and then he covered the bones with the flesh Do we have any Muslim have a comment? This is not WW. This is a book, and this is the reference, and this is the Imam Ahmad, one of the highest scholars of Islam. Any comment from the Muslims? Any objection? You remind me when you say are you blind you remind me of the stupidity of your prophet a blind man was coming to Muhammad Muhammad he said to his wives where the hijab where the hijab the wives they said but he is blind <laughs> what <laughs> But he is blind. Have you ever heard of a donkey like this? If the man is a blind, why you say to your wife wear the hijab? After Muhammad got busted by his wives, he said to them, Well, yes, he is a blind. What about you? What the heck? If they wear the hijab, that will make a difference? <laughs> what a stupid man. Muslim women are allowed to see men the reason they wear hijab because men they see them so if the man is a blind so what the point Let us find the reference in English so nobody say we are making things up. Oh. Let us see. La la la. Uh, sometime you try to find the reference. We will find it. Here we go. 
I was with the Messenger of Allah, S A W S, while Maimuna was with him, two wives of Muhammad. Then Ibn Umm Maktoum came, but Ibn Umm Maktoum is a blind man. This is happened when we were ordered to observe veil. The Prophet S A W S, the genius, said, "Observe veil, observe veil from him." We asked the Messenger of Allah. Isn't he blind? Is it is he not blind? <laughs> Neither he can see us nor recognize us. The prophet said, Are you both? Are both of you blind? Don't you see him? <laughs> <laughs> hey Abdul, when Muslim women walk in the street, do she see men? The man is dressed, he's not naked, he's not coming wearing bikini. So what do you mean they can't see him? Any Muslim can tell us? Do Muslim women allow to see a man? Or not the man is coming wearing his clothes to visit Muhammad and he is a blind why Muhammad saying you have to wear the veil and if they wear the veil that will not stop in them from seeing him anyway hello None of you are a follower of Jesus, but follow of CB. Yeah, don't worry about us following who. Worry about yourself following the God of penises. Go kiss the black stone. Mwah, pagan. You bow down to a stone. You go around the stone. You pray in direction of a stone. And yet you claim that you are not a stone believer. And not only that, your prophet, he said that whoever touched the black stone and the Yemeni corner, is all the, the stones forgive his sin? Why do I only see you touching those two corners? He said, I heard the message of Allah says, touching them erases the sin. Pagan cult. And if you want to talk about low IQ, let me show you another low IQ. Here, the case is not about your prophet, it's about your God. Let me show you. Your God is the best planner in the world. He is all-knowing. To the point he chose the Kaaba to be located in the worst location in Mecca where the flood and the sewage cover it every year. Do you see how, by the way, this is a translation here is wrong. I'm not the one who made the graphic. Somebody sent it to me. There's nowhere in the verse that says planners. But anyway, what kind of God he chose his Kaaba to be in such a location where the sewage will cover it every year will be flooded by shit. Excuse ma. How God he allows such a thing to happen to his house? He must be a holy God. I mean, obviously, this is God. Think about it. Either your God, he have a low IQ, or he need to go and learn some engineering school. 
and by the way if your God is God he can fix this issue he can just lift his finger up and the Kaaba ground will be up can't he fix it isn't it you Muslim you say to us that if Allah he wants something to happen he say B is going to be okay see B see here we go the Kaaba is flooded yesterday the, the Kaaba is flooded by cockroaches and uh, 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 an insect and uh, uh, what they call them crickets locust and Allah is doing nothing so flood shit piss sewage insect all is coming to the Kaaba Any Abdul? How Allah He chose this location? You tell me. This is the worst location in Mecca. This is the lowest point in Mecca. I advise you, Muslims, to write a request to Allah to move the Kaaba, put it in the Himalaya. I mean, okay, you know what? What about we move the Kaaba and put it here in the top of the roof next to it? Or what about we lift up the Kaaba with some uh, columns? Can we? Shall we? What if we build like 10 floor in the same location of the Kaaba and then we put the Kaaba in the top? That will solve the problem. What do you think? Or we make like a table uh, legs, you know, for the Kaaba. We lift it up. Any Muslim? Obviously, I am convinced that this is uh, Kaaba is the, uh, by the way though if you don't in case you don't know the Kaaba Supposedly is built by the angel of Allah and Allah is the one who chose the location So this is not a location chosen by me him and a human being no this is Allah Allah is all-knowing What a crazy cult Anyway, guys, I'm getting tired, really. I have many hours today. And as I say, uh, uh, yesterday, uh, Shaitan, he did piss in my ears. As the Prophet, peace upon him, he says. You know, the Prophet, he is the best doctor. I was trying to find out why, after I took a shower, why I have a liquid in my ear. And I could not find an answer, to be honest with you. I was wondering where the water came from, where I was. I was in the shower, but in the shower there's no water. We are Arab. We take shower with sand. So where the water is coming from? And then I remember that the Prophet said that shaitan be in the ears of a Muslim. But I'm not a Muslim. Maybe shaitan, he because I speak too much about Islam, he thought I'm a Muslim. Guys. Can somebody try to see if there is a smell in my ear now from the pistol? Dude, by the way, do you think that I smell nothing? <laughs> nothing, nothing smell bad. Why Shaitan don't smell? Shaitan smell uh, uh, the pistol smell not bad? I wish I can record the Shaitan holding his uh, willy and pissing in my ears and I will post it on YouTube. You can imagine how many billion they will watch my video. Like imagine Christian Prince Shaitan pissing in his ears and the video and Shaitan is holding his penis and And Christian Prince like what the heck in my ears You know and for sure there's audio because you know we can install a microphone inside the ear to make you hear the sound of the pee, -pee. And you will not believe it how many people will watch the video and how many people will convert to Islam after that by the way, the prophet he said too that his tongue sleep in your nose. Yeah, makes sense. Actually, if you sleep in the nose, where you will pee? 
What is the most closed area? And look at your ears, they look like a toilet seat. Let's see. The Prophet he ordered the Muslims to clean their nose in the morning. Why? Because Shaitan is sleeping in your nose. The Messenger of Allah said, If any of you roses from sleep and they perform ablution, he should wash his nose by putting water in it and blowing it out thrice, thrice, thrice in the nose. How disgusting! Because Satan has stayed in the upper part of his nose all night. I mean, guys, look at this disaster. Shaitan, he cannot find a place to have his cafe except the upper nose of the Muslim. The poor Muslim, he is sleeping, snoring, and Shaitan is sitting, putting a leg in the top of the other one in his upper nose. Imagine if we can record that. Just imagine. And you are telling me that Muhammad don't have high IQ? By the way, this is a true story, but please don't tell anyone, just between me and you and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, I mean, just keep it around. I mean, just local. Once, uh, this is a true story, brother. Uh, brother, when I was a child, my mother, she opened the room and she told me why you have your shoes in your nose I opened my eyes and I said to her what shoes mama she said I see shoes in your nose coming out and that was shaitan his legs is coming out but sadly brother at that time we don't have video camera to record for you or even a cell phone and by the way, this is a true story. Shaitan, he sleep in the upper. I mean, why the upper? What about the lower? He don't like it there. What is the point of the upper? Any Muslim want to tell us? Not only that. <clears throat> the Prophet, he warned us from yawning. And he encouraged us to do sneezing. The Messenger of Allah said, The sneeze is from Allah. <laughs> uh, guys, uh, Allah is saying hello to you. I just received this sneeze from Allah. <laughs> a Jew. Okay. This is again from Allah. True story. And then he says, and the yawn is from the shaitan. <sighs> shaitan, he just gave me yawn. Actually, think about it. Actually, it's like a poetry. The yawn is from the shaitan. Wow, let me sing it. The yawn is from the shaitan, and I do not know what is the adhan. When the adhan is raised up, shaitan has started farting up. And yes, the yawn is from the shaitan. And here we go, mid Quran. So, Muhammad is the discovery guy who come with the conclusion that shaitan, when you yawn, it's from him, from him and not only this. Look what Muhammad said. 
So when one of you yawns, let him cover his mouth. By the way, the Muslim, they have an article about the Prophet teaching a, a very important ethic and hygiene so we do not spread diseases. How Muhammad 1400 years ago, he says that. He ordered us to cover our mouth. But they will not tell you that the Prophet he says that because he believes shaitan is going to piss in your in your mouth and he's going to go inside and he's going to laugh at you. Read with me. When one of you yawn, let him cover his mouth with his hand. And this is what the Muslims they quote for you only. This part only. This part. This is the only part is important. The rest of the story, hide it. And then they write a long article, brothers and sisters. According to science today, it's proven by doctors that the best healthy habit is to cover your mouth by a tissue or by your hands when you sneeze or when you yawn because that will spread diseases and bacteria. But this is not what the Prophet was saying. The Prophet was actually talking about yawning and the purpose of that, he said, for when he says, Ah, oh, ah, oh, Hachu, Shaitan laugh from inside his opening. Ha, 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 ha. From where? From inside his opening. Shaitan, he jump inside your mouth. The second you sneeze, Shaitan, he jump inside your mouth and he start laughing. And you are telling me that your prophet don't have a high IQ? For sure, you have to have a very high IQ to believe in this. Where is the guys from Nigeria? Hachu? The second you say Hachu, Shaitan, he jump inside your mouth and he start laughing? And by the way, in different hadith, Muhammad, he says, Allah, he loved those who do sneeze. What the heck? Actually, in the same hadith. And indeed, Allah loves the sneeze. And he dislikes the yawn. If, 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 if. I mean, this God is really wonderful. When you sneeze, when you have a cold, Allah he is so excited, especially in, in winter. I mean, I can imagine how happy now Allah is in January, February. I mean, this in, in July, the people are, it's hot, people are yawning. Allah is so upset. Yeah, and I like it when he say indeed. I mean, look at this indeed, indeed. Indeed, Allah love those who sneeze and dislike those who yawn. The Prophet said, Allah likes sneezing and dislike yawning. So if someone sneeze, then praise Allah, etc. <clears throat> uh, I know what to say, man. Any Muslim with high IQ? Yeah, actually, I'm going to go. Actually, yesterday, last night, I did, not, I did not sleep. Last night, after I finished broadcast, uh, uh, one one of you, he said to me, there is a person who want to talk to you. It's urgent, etc. So I spoke to like, I think two hours and a half and then this person he decided to leave Islam and then he said can you wait please I want to call my sister I said okay so he called his sister but she did not come right away it took her like 30 minutes to come and then we start talking again and then his sister she left Islam and then they said to me uh, you know can we uh, call more I said I'm really dead <laughs> I am out of <laughs> and then I went to sleep and actually I wish I stayed with them because I could not sleep so I went to sleep 
And then I think I think I did not think I slept so maybe one hour. I don't think so. After I uh, I did uh, uh, like I go to bed, I could not sleep, so I decided to go and do early broadcast. This is why today at what at what time we did the broadcast? Six thirty six. I don't know. Uh, I set up the thing at five o'clock in the morning. I, I think, and then we started. I'm not sure what time. Yeah, but anyway, God is good. And today we have we have a person who left Islam, correct? In the live show, and we have two who left uh, when we spoke to them in Skype. A brother and his sister, and they are very wonderful, very nice people. You know, uh, his sister was uh, like it took me more time to convince the guy. His sister, actually, his sister is the one. She she asked him to listen to me. And his sister like she was listening to my videos for long but his sister she said to him i will not leave islam unless you leave islam so she made it a condition she will not leave unless her brother leave even though i can tell she is she is more convinced than him because it was a lot easier for me to make her say it and leave but anyway I wish I stayed with them more because they were going to call someone else, but I could not take it no more. My back hurt, my voice is gone, my eyes was burning, and actually until now, because especially I have this water in my ear, as I told you, Shaitan, he pissed on my ears. I mean, <laughs> you tell me Muhammad is a liar, here we go. <laughs> he deserve it. He's in the Shaitan and he pissed in your ears. And now what you can do about it? And you know, it's annoying, like I... I uh, because you don't have a balance in your ears, it's in the in the in the left one. So now you feel like you are half deaf. It's almost like I hear from the other one, but you can like it's and make noise. It's uh, I feel like Muhammad now. I hear voices. Hold on, hold on. What? Jibril? Oh, hold on, Jibril is talking to me. What? I will give you a verse. Or a chapter, okay. I'm really I'm listening. First of all, what is the name of the chapter? The cappuccino. Cappuccino, yes, because it's made in Italy. The cappuccino, and what do you know about the cappuccino? It contained two things, cappa and chino. And if you ask me what is made of. I say to you, no one knows except the one who made Kappa and Chino. And praise be to Allah, the one who made them together, Cappuccino. And I was like, wow, it's light. There's something touched my tongue, it's Cappuccino. And this reminds me of different chapters called the chapter of pizza. I mean, it tastes different, to be honest with you. Thank you, Allah, for the inspiration, even though my ear is not working good today, but still I was able to hear the chapter of the cappuccino. And uh, this, if you read the Quran, chapter of the chair, chapter of the elephant, chapter of the spider, chapter of the... I mean, it's like a zoo. The cow. Right. Oh boy. All right, guys. I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. Don't forget to download the videos. My videos don't stay long in my channels, and I say that for a purpose because I want people to download them. I notice many of you they are downloading my videos and they have channels. So let us do this. Tomorrow, when we open, all those who download my videos, give me the link of your page and we will ask everybody we will put it in the info we will ask everybody to go click and subscribe to your channel this way we can multiply and this is this is a way we can support each other all right so tomorrow those who do that please let me know and again I want to say thank you for those who uh, donate 
and uh, if you if you can donate more to shaitan because he did pee in my ears you know because now shaitan he don't pee this is a donation of shaitan he pee you know so as long you are donating for me what about you donate to shaitan so he can find a toilet seat and he can go and pee somewhere else i mean this guy obviously he cannot find the, the toilet seat so maybe if we can buy him a toilet seat, he can go and leave the Christian prince here alone. And look like shaitan in my area. Musayl al kadhab Look, 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 guys, look at this guy. He's saying, and he's calling me Musayl al kadhab let, let me tell you who is Musayl al kadhab Muhammad, Muhammad, he called a guy Musayl al kadhab Musayl al the liar. But the fact Muhammad is the one who stole from the, the word Rahman from Musayl so how Musaylam al kadhab is Kazab, which means a liar, but yet your prophet, he took from him the word Ar-Rahman. Who is the liar? Muhammad, he mentioned almost half of the Quran and he never mentioned the word Ar-Rahman. This guy, he sent him a letter saying, Bismillah, in the name of Ar-Rahman, Muhammad, he liked it, he said, as an answer to this guy, in the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. The Arab they say to Muhammad, Allah, we know who is He, but who is Rahman? The only Rahman we know is Rahman al Yamama. And I challenge you to call me and I will show you the reference. Huh? Ya atba'a Muhammad al Kadhub al Shadhub al Laub al Nasab al Mahub al Laboob al Sabub. اتصل يلا اتصل اتصل ما تختي شيء قال لها يا فرحان اللي بدوك ما ضرطوا من ولدك قال له يم الخناقه اتصل يا ولد good that nobody of you know Arabic Look, he's so quiet now. They play dead. The second we answer them, they play dead. Astaghfiru illallah wa atubu ilayhi. Look how holy they are. Astaghfiru Allah. They watch porn 24 hours a day. They have sex with the children. They cheat in buying and selling. They cheat in their wives. Their prophet himself was a cheater. His wives, they found him having sex with the women in their bed. And then they say, Astaghfiru Allah. How holy. How holy. Don't forget to say that after you go to the Kaaba wearing no underwear. Hello? Hello, Christian Prince. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, I have a short question for debating Muslims. If you could give me like five minutes. All right. So, uh, from your videos and from your knowledge, what I acknowledge actually, it, it's good to debate in in a, in a logic of Islam, right? So, from their point of view, so I the logic what logic? Well, uh, I I mean, basing on their faith. So, yeah. what I okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I basically mean this argument of David Wood about. Uh, Allah is praying upon Muhammad. I think that they cannot say anything about that. So it's kind of linguistic logic. So they say it's it's imperfect. Another thing, um, let's say about um, the name of uh, their God, the name of Allah. It's not. It, it's the name of the moon and things like that. You know. Could, could you suggest me more like? Irrefutable. Nothing, I can suggest you nothing. Watch my videos and whatever I say, this is the way to debate them. Listen, learn, yeah. learn. And, uh, yeah. and the yeah. argument of David Wood, this is not an argument of David Wood because David Wood do not know even speak Arabic. So I do not know what the word salam means, correct? Uh, I don't know. That's uh, that's where yeah, I, I know. Heard. I know he said that in the debate, but this is something I made videos since before even David Wood, he was even uh, mm -hmm. he, he became a Christian. So those who do not know Arabic, they cannot make such an argument. This is this is have to do with language, and mm -hmm. someone who knows the Arabic in order to make such a so, such a you know. And this is a, an, an, an a challenge I made for the Muslim long time ago, 
about right. Allah pray on Muhammad. How, how is it possible that if you just type it in Google, uh, you will, the only answer you get it's it's that the blessing, not even the prayer. How how is it possible n nobody else uh, notice it and uh, it's e even there is no inner debate in Islam about that. No problem because the Muslims uh, for them they have to come with a solution. Remember the interpretation of the Quran is uh, to defend the Quran, not to explain the Quran. Same time, if you have knowledge, you can right away get them busted. The hadith says that Muhammad he said to them, when you do salat on me, there's some somehow the, there's an echo coming back on my in my uh, in my ear. But anyway, Muhammad he said, I don't know if you see the hadith. Yeah, yeah. He I said do. to them, when you do when you pray, uh, uh, pray on Friday, do a lot of a prayer uh, uh, on Friday. And as you see here, in the translation too, they translated as a blessing. You see it, mm -hmm. but in Arabic yeah. it doesn't say blessing. It says salah. Now, but let us say it is a blessing. But Muhammad here is saying, "Do pray on me a lot on Friday," and look, he's what he said. For your salah will be submitted to me. Yeah, yeah, like as if he's if he's a god. Okay, so yeah. if if this is if this is a prayer, if this is a blessing. Uh, the blessing will be submitted to him because the Muslim they say they are asking Allah to send the blessing, correct? Yeah, okay. So, if they are asking Allah, why the what they ask for is coming to Muhammad? Yeah, it should go to Allah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The actual word sub submitted, if you say a blessing or a prayer, or that's what they're saying. If you ask them, they say yeah, yeah. it says they are asking. Allah is asking. Allah is asking the believers because the, the verse have two parts. One it says that Allah, the Muslim, they say he is sending blessing, and one part is saying he's asking the Muslims to invoke a blessing on Muhammad. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Invoke a blessing on me, as you see. Actually, even here it says invoke. Right? What invoke mean? It's mean you ask Allah to send the blessing to do yeah okay yeah. but why why is going to be submitted to me why the invoke will be submitted yeah to yeah me? yeah the connotation of that word is should submit it to yeah God. if you read in yeah. Arabic there is no word of blessing it says salatukum ma'ruda alay read it read it fa inna salatukum ma'ruda alay fa akthiru alayya min al-salat fihi fa inna salatukum ma'ruda alay so do a lot of salah on Friday on me because your salah will be submitted to me. Who is Muhammad to submit the salah for him? Right. And not yeah. only that, after that, the Muslim they say to him, But how we will submit the salah for you and you will be dead? Muhammad he said, when they asked him that, he said, How can our salah? Be submitted to you when your body is decayed. He said, Allah has forbidden the earth from consuming the body of the Prophet. But yeah, and which turned out to be lies because he actually decayed. Yeah, afterward. but it's not the problem now. It's not a problem. Are you dead or alive? <laughs> let, yeah. us say, let us say you are dead and the earth does not consume. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But well, like, maybe but, they mean that they will submit it as if he is in paradise or something. No, but, no, no. He will be no. And the Muhammad he said in the hadith that he will be the first one to be resurrected in the judgment day, not now. You know, the first one. So he is in the grave, and now he is saying that their prayer will be submitted to him, and mm -hmm. not only submitted to him, which means will be placed in front of me. Will I will I will, I will, I will review it. You know. Torad, yeah. I will review it. So here, Muhammad, he claimed he's alive. Yeah. His body is alive. This is why it will, not, it will never be consumed. And he will be able to review all the prayer. At the same time, if Muhammad is a prophet and he's a man, how a man can review a, a prayer of a billion human beings every night or every Friday? Yeah. Stupid. So here, it cannot be, it cannot be what they are saying. And simply, uh, you know, if I'm a Muslim, I would try to cover it because this is a problem. How Allah is not God, but yet He is sending uh, 
uh, he's making a prayer to Muhammad and if the verse saying that Allah he is sending a blessing then what the point of saying and the angels send the blessing uh, Allah he blessed him already yeah yeah that but but that could be explained in but the thing is no it cannot that... no it cannot if if God he blessed you I cannot bless you that's it you're blessed Oh, they could say that it, it's like an additional blessing. There's no something. additional, my friend. If God blessed you, what additional? There's additional. There's extra. This is God. If God, He said, you are blessed. Are blessed. <laughs> Maybe they will say that that if he, that even angels love Him or whatever. But this argument about the um, the first one I've mentioned, uh, the David Wood and, or yours, that's really you know like a real knowledge, I would say, because I find no Muslim, no matter a Sheikh, Imam, or regular Muslim that could say anything, I, anything. Think I made a video go watch it I use a video of uh, of uh, hijab Muhammad hijab after the debate he made a second video to explain how stupid he is but instead of fixing it he made it blind so go and watch it and laugh he <laughs> quote for us different verse he quote for us chapter 9 verse number uh, um, um, which one because there's many actually the same saying the same anyway he quote for us the verse where it says that Allah he told Muhammad uh, to take from their uh, arms money and pray on them. He said this is the same exact word. So it says pray. Yeah. It doesn't say blessing. He is the one who chooses it. Go yeah. watch the video. I explain it in details. Anyway, my friend, anything else? Uh, yeah, also the Surah 14, Ayah 118, about um, the <coughs> Allah is the best of the creators. And when I say inner logic, I, I mean they claim that it's perfect in terms of arabic logic uh, arabic language even from formal logic of language when you say best of the creators there should be other creators right so even even that kind of simple arguments and they have basically nothing to say but thank you anyway for what you're doing but don't get too uh, too arrogant but i think your knowledge is exceptional and thank you for what you're doing Okay, thank, and, you uh, thank you. Yeah. Well, I prefer to stay arrogant. I don't know what arrogant means for you, but uh, here we speak with knowledge, and we are not people who claim. There's many people they claim that they knew, but they don't. And there is very simple way uh, to claim knowledge. You see, anyone, anyone who don't speak. As an example, I cannot claim to be a scholar in the Bible for a very simple reason. In order to be a scholar in the uh, in any Bible, let us say the Hebrew, I have to speak Hebrew. As simple as that. In order to be a scholar in the Aramaic Bible, I have to speak Aramaic. In order to be a scholar in the Greek Bible, I have to be at least speaking Greek. And Islam is no different. Anyone he claim knowledge of Islam, but he don't speak Arabic, he is learning from translators. He could not learn from first-hand source. And there's a huge difference between learning from translators and learning from first-hand source. Because translation can make a big difference. This is why in Arabic, we don't say the word blessing, we say the word salah. In English, they add the word blessing. In English, the best of the creators, sometimes they say the best of to create. They add even, the, they take the word, the letter S, they take it off. If we change this translator here, we will find in different translation, they don't say the best of the creator. They say the best to create. So what happened to Creator? Like this guy here, he said the Creators. But there's some others. They made the word the Creator disappear. They say create. We have to change and see which one of them. Best creator. You see it? 
by taking the s off i changed the whole meaning just a letter can change the whole thing the same as jehovah's witnesses when they translate that in the, 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 the like if you go to book of john verse number one just verse number one they just change in one letter will make the whole different they say in the beginning it was the word and the word was with god and the word was a god not the god by trying by, by making the the or the a the whole book became corrupt because that changed the whole me now we have many gods so it's very important you know uh, you can be knowledgeable yes and you don't speak a language about about something but you cannot say I am a scholar scholarship you have to go deep in the language because language bring you all the secret of of the, of the belief language is very extremely important this is why if you uh, if you listen to someone uh, as an example like Wari Shabbat I cannot compare between Wari Shabbat and someone else who never speak Arabic speaking about Islam for a very simple reason Wari Shabbat he have the opportunity because he speak Arabic to read all the library of Muslims and learn scholarship is about studying and learning and being smart at the same time so if you cannot read the Arabic library but you can read only the library which is in English which is very tiny and limited how you can earn knowledge the book of Ibn Kathir in English is not even 1% or let us say sorry maybe 60% of the book of Ibn Kathir in Arabic what happened the translator he cut it off tons of disaster stuff he hide it This is why I, I decide to teach people Arabic, but sadly, you know, people don't like things for free. We made a class, paid the class, people they came. We made a free class, nobody show up. People don't like things for free. You know, don't appreciate, they think it's cheap. If you if you if you put if you put something extremely valuable in the street and you say you put a sticker in it, it's for free. Nobody would take it. And people, people will be suspicious why it's for free. I mean, it must, must be bad, right? You know what I mean, guys? If you buy something extremely, it costs you a lot of money, and you put it in the street right now, and put a sticker on it, it says it's free. Unless it looks really go good, nobody will buy it. Because people will, will, will free? What free? It must be bad, must be broken, must be something wrong with it. You know? But say it is ten thousand dollars and it's for free, I will give it to you. Or you know, no, don't say for free. Sorry. Then you will see people stop and they discuss with you what the price and how can you give us discount and etc. The second you say for free, it's for free. Same, you know, human being. This is this is the nature of a human being. This is why a man who he, you know he like. Uh, like you see these days uh, a relationship between men and women became very cheap why because you get whatever you want for free before in order a man to have a woman in his bedroom he have to work hard to convince his family and her family and talk to her and be polite and he have a reputation and his family the family of the girl they check his reputation what people says about him what people say about her blah 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 and then they ask for the hand and then they have a wedding and then after the wedding he can kiss her now they go to bed even they do not know the, the name of each other they wake up in the morning who are you This is why nobody want to marry a woman like this and nobody want to marry a man like that why they want to get married it's for free why the man who want to take responsibility to have a children's to take care of them to have a family that's it a woman any woman she sleep with me and that's it 
all right for free first time I heard this statement it's an American statement they say if uh, if I can get a milk for free why I want to buy a cow so the mentality of free and by the way a man who get things from a woman for free he don't respect her unless really he love her I mean but if you love her you marry her if you love a woman you don't just want to kiss her you want to marry her you want to have a family coming back in two hours maybe I don't know should I <laughs> anyway <laughs> I have a channel teaching you how to read Arabic go learn and then you will be able really to study and then you can be one day someone who have a lot of knowledge for me if I don't speak Arabic I will be very limited in Islam there's no question about that it's not because I have a degree in Islam I know studying Islam in Islamic school teach you nothing the teacher is a goat and the student are goatees and nobody understand what is we're talking about everybody praising Allah everybody praising the Prophet this is what the holy class is about stupidity so you finish your degree you learn nothing you are no one you want to learn you have to work hard in yourself and the best way to learn is to study the language this is the first key of knowing anything you don't know the language you will always be behind always yeah like for me if I can study Hebrew I, will, I would love to but sadly there's no time I wish I did that when I was like a uh, you know I have opportunity when I was a teenage maybe that is the easiest time to learn or to study even Greek that would be wonderful you know so I can understand the Bible better and I will not be reading a translation because always translation it doesn't matter how much perfect it is it's not going to be the same as the original no matter how good the translator is right anyway I want to say thank you guys for being here I uh, really appreciate you and uh, I can tell I'm getting tired my battery is exhausted um, uh, I need to be recharged again <laughs> so I hope I can charge maybe after one hour we go back on air uh, I'm just joking uh, I hope tomorrow we can do so and until we see you soon again may the Lord bless you Christ is Lord and Islam is false. See you soon. Bye-bye.